Hi, Dan Sussman here. In today's presentation, intended primarily for English as a Second Language students, we're going to talk about something called time clauses. And in particular, we'll talk about reduced time clauses, a handy way to make your English sound more natural. Uh, it's a little tricky at times, so we'll have a few exercises at the end to see what you've learned, as well as some resources for review. So let's get started. Before we can talk about time clauses or reduced time clauses, we have to take a step back to talk about adverb clauses because, in fact, these are what time clauses are. They're part of the adverb clause family. And uh, if you're in any of my classes or you've studied this on your own in your classes, you probably know that an adverb clause first will contain a subject and a verb, well, that's uh, what makes it a clause. After all, all clauses contain their own subject and verb. However, unlike independent clauses that can stand on their own as sentences, as a sentence rather, an adverb clause does not express a complete thought. It's a subordinate clause. It has to be paired with an independent clause to form a full sentence. And finally, an adverb clause will answer one of these three adverb questions. How, when, or why. So if we look at a couple of examples, here's one. When the phone rang, he was outside. Well, our adverb clause here is when the phone rang. The subject is phone. The verb is rang. The clause is not a complete thought because if I just said, when the phone rang, You'd want to know what happened when the phone rang. And finally, the clause answers the question, when. Here's another example. He scrubbed the shower until his arms ached. Here, until his arms ached is the adverb clause. The subject is arms and the verb is ached. The clause here, again, is not a complete thought. It could not stand on its own as a sentence. And the clause answers the question here again, when, when, until, okay. So that's adverb clauses. So what, what are these time clauses? Time clauses, which are, as I say here, a type of adverb clause, they show a chronological or a time relationship between two actions that occur within a single sentence. Now, that's all a mouthful, but uh, hopefully it'll be a little clear with some examples. While I was walking through the park, I saw a classmate. We have two events within the same sentence. Walking through the park, seeing a classmate. The use of the time clause, while I was walking through the park, that use of the word while, tells us how these two events to relate to each other in time. They occurred at the same time, or simultaneously. While one thing happened, another thing happened. Here's another example. After I finished the book, I returned it to the library. In this one, we've got one action that occurs after the other one. First, is after I finished the book. I finished the book. After that happened, I returned it to the library. Two events that occur in one sentence, and now through the use of a time clause, I know how they relate to one another chronologically. In some cases now, we're able to shorten the time clause within a sentence, but there are some conditions that apply and there are some rules that apply to how we do it. First of all, you can't do this with every time clause. The time clause has to begin with the words before or right before, after or right after, or while. Those are the three situations where you can reduce the time clause. Before, after, or while. Or right before, right after, or while. And both clauses in the sentence, both the subordinate clause and the independent clause have to have the same subject. And again, this is a hard concept to wrap your head around without some examples, and that's what we're coming upon now. So, 
Rule number one, when the time clause that you can shorten contains a form of the verb be, get rid of it and the subject of the dependent clause. Here's what I mean. While I was walking in the park, I saw a classmate. While I was walking in the park, that is your time clause. We get rid of the subject, we get rid of the verb, because the subject in both the independent and the dependent clause are the same, I. And what we are left with is, while walking in the park, I saw a classmate. While walking in the park, I saw a classmate. Here's another example. While I was in the classroom, I listened to the teacher. Now again, in both clauses here, we've got the same subject, I. And we have the uh, adverb while, which as we know before, that means using while, we can reduce this uh, clause. So, what we do is we get rid of the subject and the verb in the time clause, and what we're left with is, while in the classroom, I listened to the teacher. Okay, rule two. Now, with rule one, we had to have a verb, uh, the verb be, a form of the word, verb be in the, uh, in the time clause to handle it that way. But what if you have a situation where there is no be verb? Well, in that case, you omit the subject, you get rid of it in the time clause, and you change the verb to its present participle form. So, after I finished the book, I returned it to the library. There's no be form of the be verb in after I finished the book, which is our uh, time clause. So what we do is we drop the subject and we use the present participle form of the verb finish, which is finishing. So after finishing the book, I returned it to the library. Let's try it again. Before I drank beer, I made sure my friend could drive me home. Now, our time clause there is before I drank beer. We drop the subject, I, and then we change the uh, verb, which is drank in this case, to the present participle form. Before drinking beer, I made sure my friend could drive me home. All right. Now, here's an opportunity for you to test yourself on this. Can the time clauses in the following sentences be reduced, and if so, how? So here's a sentence. I usually read the newspaper while I have breakfast. Take a few seconds and think about whether we can reduce this one. Well, we can. We can reduce it to, I usually read the newspaper while having breakfast. Now this is a little different from the ones you've seen before earlier in this presentation because the time clause comes at the end of the sentence, not the beginning. Nevertheless, we handle it the same way. Uh, in this case, there's no be verb. All I have to do is drop the subject, which is I, change have to its present participle form, having. So I usually read the newspaper while having breakfast. Let's try another one. My mother races off to work right after I leave for school. Can we reduce this one and how? Well, in fact, we can't reduce this time clause. The subject in the main clause is mother. The subject in the time clause, after I leave for school, is I. Different subjects. When you have different subjects, you cannot reduce the time clause. Let's try another one. After she brushes her teeth, 
My sister won't drink orange juice. We can reduce this one. First, let's look at each clause. After she brushes her teeth, which is the uh, time clause, uh, has the subject she. The independent clause, my sister won't drink orange juice. The subject is sister. Now, while they are two different words, she is the pronoun and sister is a noun, they're referring to the same thing. They are essentially the same subject. So we've got that situation. So we don't have a uh, have verb, so all we do is in the time clause, after she brushes her teeth, we drop the subject, she. We change brushes to the present participle form of the verb, brushing. And what we're left with is, after brushing her teeth, my sister won't drink orange juice. Now, all of this is a lot to take in. Uh, I suggest that you do some exercises on your own. Uh, if you need a review and you're in my classes, uh, one place you can go is the book Passages, our textbook for the uh, ESL 042 course at uh, Phoenix College. And if you go to page 29, you can review the information about reduced time clauses.